What else? <laughs> All right, there you go. Coffee works. Love works. Building our relationship with God. Relationship with God works. Community, Community music. All right. Prayer. Prayer. That's a good one. We'll have lots of that. Unity. Meditation. All right. Game day after after service. So if you all want to come after whoever's virtual, you can come play games afterwards. All right. So we will start our service this morning with a very positive song. What, anybody remember the name of it? All right, nothing is impossible. And we're gonna have, I know, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin flipped it, okay. So I, well, let's, uh, one more time, what are we singing? Nothing is impossible. All right, we're gonna have Kathy come lead us. Good morning. I heard that Kevin tried to like outdo me last week. Are we going to let that happen? No. Hit it, Kevin. Wilbur and Orville had a dream. Nothing is impossible. Imagine if a man took wing. Nothing is impossible. People laugh, it can't be done. Man's not meant to fly. Their little dream changed everything. They dare to touch the sky. Nothing is impossible. You were born into this world with everything you need. Hold on to your heart, the magic starts. Okay, so we know we have fun here as well as worship, so it's great. And that's what keeps us going as a community. Oh, it's great to see all these faces in here today. So we have a statement of faith that says who we are. And if we'd all recite that together with energy, please. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence, and an affirmation of who we really are. Thank you, God, that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present, and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. And our congregational affirmation as we think of what we are as a community, what we want to be, 
and the minister that we want to call into our community as well. We say at the Unity Center, our loving, diverse, inclusive spiritual community who come together to demonstrate and live the teaching of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, and empowering ourselves and others. And we at Unity subscribe to the base of Unity in general worldwide and are a praying community. We have several ways that we do that. One is on Thursday with the prayer service at 11 o'clock. Um, it was literally only about 15, 20 minutes. We also pray in the library at 930 before the service on Sunday. So if anybody gets here early and doesn't know what to do with those few minutes, please come join us. You're welcome to come in even if the doors are closed, just come in quietly and pray with us uh, for a few minutes before the service. We have our prayer box over on the side there and you're welcome to put your prayers in that. And we also have our chaplain program that has started again. And both Sue and I will be over there after the service praying with you if you'd like. But in the meantime, during our service, we take prayer requests and we do speak our intentions aloud with the use using just the first name and our, out, our desired outcome. So if anyone would like to make a prayer request, Denise. Terry and Kendall Healy. Elizabeth and Brian healing in time of grief. Mr. Kathy and recovery. And that one. Thank you for healing. Let me spell that. Okay, and then remember what I said. Okay. Yes. Susan. I'm sorry. Thanks for doing Randall. That's your ten successful surgery. I know you all on virtual can't hear it otherwise. So, and I'm going to put Jim for successful surgery. Rob and Jack and their wonderful wedding.
former minister, Reverend Mary, who celebrated another birthday this week. And the ministers, the ministers all over, leaders, leaders in general, if they listen to it, calling. You know what? That includes all of us because we're all leaders. Just know that. Susan, okay. <laughs> Anybody who hasn't stood up here, we have a beautiful scenery outside our window. But it also glares back when you look at it. <laughs> That's why I don't see hands. I need takes a village. All right. Do we have a spoken program? We can't spoken prayer at this time. Again, if you want to come back to us later, we'll have something to help you with verbalizing the other one. Okay. So I ask you all to open your hands, open your hearts. Envision those that you have named or anyone you haven't named uh, in these prayers. As we turn to God, Father, Mother, God, you have heard these prayers that have been voiced. You know that there are some that have not been voiced. That we all in our hearts know that the everything is for the greatest and highest good for ourselves, for our friends, for our family. And even those that we don't consider falling into that category. So today we have voiced a request for healing and know that, that will happen. That these people will be whole and complete because you said so, because you're not. Terry, Marilyn, Kendall, Eloise, Elizabeth, Ryan, Kim, Randall, Ken, Sierra, Rick, Mark, Susan. They have all asked, we have asked for healing in whatever manner they need. We know that they've asked for physical healing, but that also includes mental and spiritual healing as well, because all that is combined. We know that you will make them whole and complete. We also have prayers for Rod and Jack who celebrated their wedding yesterday and know that they will have a happy and healthy union together. We thank you for the celebration of Reverend Mary as she celebrated another birthday. We ask that all leaders are given just a little extra nudge that they listen to their calling. That each person here also listens to their calling, whether that be in a professional or voluntary, in any manner, political, whatever kind of action you have called them to be and to take on, including in this community. We know that everyone here has a calling to be a part of Unity Center in Milwaukee. And we thank you for bringing us all together in that calling. We also ask that you give Linda confidence and joy. We affirm that it is so. We know that several of our friends and family are going in for surgery. And we know that it will be successful, that the hands of the surgeons, the faith of those having that surgery, will look to you and affirm perfect healing and perfect outcomes. Especially for Sister Catherine Ann, for Pastor Ken, for Jim, for Chris. We affirm that all these prayers, as well as those that have not been voiced, 
will come to the best and highest good for all involved. Of course, we do also pray for our own Unity Center community. And as we look toward a new minister, we affirm that the right and perfect person will come to join us. And that we also affirm that full and compute, complete finances and the appropriate contractors will step forward to repair our parking lot. And that until that happens, all will be safe walking and driving through it. We thank you, God, and know that everything we ask for is so. Amen. Okay, lots of requests here, so. And next, I think we have a daily word, and we'll have Sue come up and read her. Good morning. Good morning. Word, thoughtful. My kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. Today I bring the love and peace of God to all my encounters by being thoughtful. More than politeness and deeper than kindness. Thoughtfulness means I consider the comfort and happiness of others equal to my own. My intention is to let those in my life know what they mean to me. I may reach out to someone who needs an encouraging word, letting them know they have what it takes to succeed. I may surprise someone with a kind act, anticipating a need and taking care of something for them before they have to ask. Each thoughtful word and act lets those in my life know how important they are to me and how worthy they are of my time and attention. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hebrews 13, 16. Thank you, Sue. And now we have some wonderful music, again, talking about what our thoughts are, from Julie and Linda. Thank you very much. We're going to start with a, a song actually written by Meg Barbhaus. I gave them to you in the wrong order there, Cindy. But um, it's about Julian of Norwich and sort of a conversation that she had with Julian, I guess, who Julian uh, lived in the 1300s. And um, let's see, I just want to say she, she has the earliest surviving English language works by a woman. You can look up more about her, but uh, one of her key words was to say, all shall be well, or all will be well. Just so it's perfect follow-up to our prayer session. Linda for being here. Two. Yeah, right. Wrong key, Julie. This is the one, the second song doesn't have a capo. This one, has, that's why that sounded weird. There we go. That's nicer. I said, Julian, you were holding, you were holding my hand. I said, Julian, you were holding, you were holding my hand. She said, all will be well, all will be well. All manner of things will be well. I said, Julian, do you not know, do you not know about sorrow? Julian, do you not know, do you not Do you not know, do you not know 
about hunger. Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about shame? She said, all oh, will be well. All oh, will be well. All oh, manner of things will be well. I said, Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about loneliness? Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about disease? Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about cruelty? Julian, it's too much. Brought me to my knees. She said, oh, all will be well. Oh, will be well. All manner of things will be well. She said, no one does not know, does not know about sorrow. No one does not know, does not know about pain. She said, no one does not know, does not know about hunger. I said, no one does not know, does not know about shame. She said, all will be well, all will be well, all matter. Will be well. She said, all will be well. All will be well. All manner of things will be well. Okay. I do the same thing. So well, thank you, Julie and Linda. And I think we have a minister now to give us a message. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be <laughs> Reverend Patty Pimpia talking about Myrtle Fillmore and healing. So please welcome Reverend Patty. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Sri. I'm so glad that Charles and Myrtle came to visit today and be here and be present for all of us. And that good morning, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. I um I, I do. I enjoy coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, it's always so warm and down to earth and and just it's cozy. It's just cozy here. And you know, I was talking with some people, um, I don't know, last week or something or another. They said, you know, it's really hard to go to church because, and I thought this was very interesting. I did and have never heard this excuse before. And I thought it was just absolutely great. They said, it's hard for me to go to church because they're more into entertaining me than teaching me. Amen, right? We come to church because we want to be taught, right? We learn how we can build a relationship with God, right? And that's why we're all here today. We can have the big bands, the big worship music, and, you know, yelling and screaming. And not that I don't mind a good uh, amen or hallelujah here and there, but, you know, while I'm speaking, but do you, you understand what I'm saying? My job as a minister is to be a teacher. That's why they, the rabbis in the Jewish tradition, rabbi means teacher. So I'm here to teach today. And I want to teach about how we, I'm sort of combining Charles and Myrtle Fillmore's, uh, well, really basically Myrtle Fillmore's healing and building our relationship with God. Because if it was not for her building her relationship with Jesus Christ, yes, I said that in a unity church, Jesus Christ, none of us would be here today. The unity movement would not be here today. Am I right? 
Okay. Everybody says Myrtle was the co-founder of Unity and Charles was the other co-founder. And that's really nice. You know, she spread the joy and the success. But if it was not for Myrtle's healing, would all of this be here? She changed the world by her healing. That's how powerful we are as individuals. But are we accepting that responsibility within us as children of God to find out who we really are? Not what society says we are, but who we really are in God's mind, God's heart, God's vision of us. If we don't have a relationship with God, we will never know who we are and what we are capable of doing. It's like the first song we sing. Amen. Do you really believe that? But when we're feeling sorry for ourselves and we're down in the doms and we feel so hurt, do we really believe anything is possible? But when we say we believe anything is possible with God, that means God's will, not mine. Can I get an amen on that? That's true. You know, our egos just sort of like want to walk in and tell us what we need. And remember, ego stands for easing God out. That's why we're always praying this or something better, God. We're surrendering the outcome to God. So I have a question for you today. On a scale one to 10, answer this to yourself. You don't have to answer it to me because I got to answer it to myself every day. What is my desire to know God more intimately? What do I do daily to build my relationship with God? If I want a life of abundance, of health, of wealth, of love and kindness and compassion and empathy and friendships and great relationships, what's my desire to know God? Do I carve out time in my life to get to know God better? If you don't, then you deserve the life you have. You got it by right of consciousness. If you do build out that time and you see your life improving because you're using the word of God to remove from you your mind and your heart the negative energies and the negative thoughts that you have and you're replacing it with the word of God. Do we even know what the word of God about is about? Are we preaching the Bible? Are we talking about biblical verses? When I went to um, school to be a licensed unity teacher, we were taught that anything we preached, we had to back it up with biblical scripture. I wonder if they still teach that today. I don't know. I'm old. It's been a long time. Okay. So what, what, you know, how, how are you showing up? How are you showing up in work? You know, if we don't make room or we don't make time for the Holy Spirit to come in and transform us, even if it's in a moment of silence, counting our breaths, focusing on our breaths, it's a simple thing as that. I'm always asking God, God, I don't want to feel this way. Please help me. Take these feelings away. They're not what I want to feel. Are we even asking God to take away our negative feelings? Or are we enjoying them? Because we're getting attention for them. Well, there's a payoff everywhere. Dr. Phil, a famous quote. And how's that working for you? How's that working for you? How's your life working for you today? Who's responsible for your life? 
whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not because of society. It's not because of work. It's not because of your relationship, your family, blah, blah, blah. You and I are in charge of our own lives. So what are we doing? Charles and Myrtle Fillmore taught um, affirmations and release statements. They're, they're called denials, but everybody gets it. It's by a choice of word there, but Charles and Myrtle, but as we got older and more mature in the movement, we realized what are our release statements? Do we even ask for these negative thoughts and negative feelings to be released from us? Or do we just sit around and ponder them and let them just grow? So what are we doing? Come Holy Spirit. You know, I sit in my car and all of a sudden I get crazy thoughts in my head and I got to switch it. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I pray. Come Holy Spirit in your most special way. Please, and whatever it is that I'm going through in that moment in time, please release these feelings from me. Please give me enough energy to get home, you know? Uh, please, dear God, you know, Holy Spirit, remove my, my mental fog that I'm having because I had to be so present for so many families and patients of mine that I'm just mentally exhausted. It's not the physical exhaustion. It's the mental exhaustion of being a hospice chaplain. We all experience it. So... Myrtle Fillmore had a healing of TB. TB, over 100 years ago. And how did she do it? It was with her relationship with God. And here's the other nasty word that a lot of us don't like to hear and it begins with f forgiveness forgiveness her healing was based on forgiveness do you know that she and charles went to um a new thought lecture by eb weeks and she heard the words I, that I am a child of God and I cannot inherit disease. So how many people go around and they just grab that disease? Oh, it's in my family. In my family, I'm going to get it next. I know it. Why in God's name would you put that on yourself? How about if we go, I'm breaking the chain. I ain't getting that disease. No matter what it is. I am not getting that disease. I am healthy, whole, and complete. That's an affirmation. The release statement is, I'm not getting that disease. I'm letting all that energy go. I'm done. I'm done. Am I making sense, folks? We've got a lot of work to do. Our world needs us. Our God needs to work through each and every one of us. Here. And I am adding you. Let your light shine among all men, all women upon this earth. Because right now, in the history of what we're, go what we're going through right now, our lights are needed. Our lights are needed. Let's step up our game. And the way we step up our game is stepping up our relationship with God, prayer and meditation. And I don't care whether or not you like it or not. I ask Julie that every time I come and I preach here, I want that song played. My thoughts are prayers. Because I'm going to pound it in your heads like it was pounded in mine. I've been in unity since 1977. I started when I was two. No.
okay? My thoughts are my prayers, my consciousness, my world out here. I, I have a friend, man, she would just, she lives in another country and she sends me all this negative stuff about my country. I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to read this. But I had a different word. Did I ever tell you about the little stat, uh, the little plaque I found? I love Jesus, but I still cuss a little. That's me. That's me. <coughs> so, and I like to cuss, okay? It sort of releases the energy out of me. I'm not like a sailor, a drunken sailor or anything. But do you understand what I'm saying? Come on, you all cuss too. So let's not, you know, let's not cast any stones here. Maybe the children don't yet, but you know, but they, yeah, the yet is the key word. <laughs> Watch TikTok, you hear some really great things come out of kids' mouths. So, you know, about stepping up your game in life. Okay, I know I'm loud. I know I'm sassy. I walk into the office and they all go, Patty's here. I go into the house. Can we keep it down, Patty? We're not deaf. Well, most of my clientele is hard of hearing, so, you know. But also I'm Sicilian and Italian. You always talk loud, you know? I mean, that was just normal. So. You know, then I used to feel bad. Then I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to feel guilty because I'm loud. I am not going to feel guilty because maybe it, other people might take offense to it. That's their problem, not mine. Am I right? So I want to share a couple stories with you. And this one touched me so deeply. It's about stepping up and letting your light shine in your life. I was sitting in Culver's parking lot with two friends. We were waiting for our food to come out. And off in the corner, I saw a car and a Jeep. And they were filled with guys, you know, young men, maybe high school, maybe first year college students. And the guy that had the Jeep, he uh, had the roof off and the sides off and all that was left was the roll bars, okay? So uh, and they're yelling and screaming back and forth and one guy gets up and sits on the back of the roll bar. And they're coming around the parking lot and they're coming out, they're, they were going to come out behind the car. I jump out of the car and all I hear from the car is, oh my God, what is she gonna do? And I stood in front of the Jeep, made him stop. And the guy rolls down the window, he's got a big grin. Yeah, ma'am, what, uh, uh, what's up? And I just, please, don't kiss. Because the guys that were sitting in the corner in the car were saying, gun it, gun it. I said, I worked at Condell Hospital in the emergency room. And there was, Two brothers, they were twins. And one twin brother was driving and his other brother was on the hood of the car and did the same thing. And I told him that story. And I said, that twin brother, I still think to him this day because they had to shave off the back, cut off the back of the skull of his younger brother who had a free ride to Harvard University to stop the pressure and the bleeding. I had to get his parents 
And the mother said, and, and who are you? I said, I'm Patty, I'm the chaplain. And I saw this woman just fall to her knees like a mother would. Oh my God, this is awesome. And I said, I never want to see another mother fall to their knees the way I saw that mother fall to her knees because her one son accidentally killed his brother because his brother never survived. I said, you can drive out of here and you can call me a bitch, old lady, a hag, whatever you want. And that kid on the roll bar slid right back down into the seat. I'm getting chills as I'm telling this story. I said, please don't do that. I don't want any of you to die tonight. And the idiot over in the corner still yelling, gone it, gone it. And I didn't say anything to him. And the guy in the car said, ma'am, I promise you, we won't do that ever. And please don't. You don't want to kill one of your friends. You don't want to kill yourself. That is an example of letting your light shine and not caring what other people think or wonder about what they're doing. The next morning I got up, I went out on my deck and I was looking at the lake across the street. And I was just sitting there and I heard the voice of God and the voice of God said, you saved my son last night. clears the bell. And I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. I wasn't even thinking about that, what I did last night. God just wanted to tell me that he was proud of me. And I didn't do it to have God be proud of me. I thought it was the next right thing to do. Wouldn't, I mean, there are times we know what the next right thing to do is and we don't do it because we're afraid of what other people are going to think. Who cares? You have to live with yourself. You're the one who has to wake up with yourself because you know what? If I didn't get out of that car that night, I would have wondered what the hell happened to that kid. I would have been scanning the news, Google because I would have been worried sick about him. The older I get, the more mature I get in regards to, I don't care what other people think about what I'm doing or what I'm saying. If I make a mistake, I have no problem telling you, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And I don't choke on those words anymore. If you do, you'll get through it. You'll get through it. The choking will go away. I promise you. It keeps you humble. And that's what I want to be before my God, is to be humble. Do you know that Myrtle set up a chair every day in her room? And she invited the presence of Jesus Christ to come in and to pray with her and to give her understanding of the scriptures. Do you think she knew how she was going to change the world? No. There's a little article that Myrtle Fillmore wrote that I wanna share with you. You are a child of God. First of all, I want to say this. Each and every one of you is a child of God. Do you hear me? You are a divine expression of life itself. And God loves you. And how do I know God loves you? Because the Bible tells me God loves us. 
no matter what. No matter what, but we got to do our part. We got to do our part. And if we don't be in it, all this airy fairy stuff. Be into the Holy Spirit. May the, may the Holy Spirit ascend upon each and every one of you today. I hope somebody here today's life is changed by this lesson. I don't give sermons. I give lessons. This is what Myrtle wrote. And forgiveness is the foundation of this movement outside of prayer. And when I remember, I, not, I don't remember as much as I should, but I'm not going to should myself. I do my best to remind myself that I need to forgive myself every day. I need to remind myself that I have to ask God to cleanse and purify my heart of any negative emotion that I may have, feeling that I may have, or unforgiveness that I have towards myself and others. It's a, it has to be a daily practice if we want to feel God in our lives. And you're feeling God, even if you don't think you're feeling God, because God is omnipresence and we're sitting in the midst of omnipresent God. We need to get with the program, not lip service. No more lip service. Practice what you say you believe in. Sometimes I got to forgive people more than once. Doggone it, I hate that too. I go, wow. All right, now I can really get down to reading what Myrtle wrote. But I might stop along the way because something will come. It says, I had made what seems to me a discovery. I was sick. I had all the ills of mind and body that I could bear. So she was at her breaking point, right? Medicine and doctors ceased to give me relief and I was in despair until I found, until I found, listen to these words, it's not airy-fairy Christianity. I found practical Christianity. Do you know on the walls at the school, before you get into the gates, it would say Unity, School of Practical Christianity. They don't have that there anymore. I'm just saying, not judging them, just saying. I affirm my beliefs and I was healed. I did most of the healing work myself because I wanted to understand for the future use. This is how I made what I called my discovery. I was thinking about life. Life is everywhere in animals and in people. Then why doesn't the life in the animal make bodies like a human? I asked. Then I thought the animal has not as much sense as a human. Ah, intelligence as well as life is needed to make a body. Here's the key to my discovery. I had to be guided by intelligence in making all forms. The same law works in my own body. Life is simply a form of energy and it has to be guided and directed in a person's body by his or her intelligence. How do we commun communicate intelligence? By thinking and talking, of course. That's why they say, watch your words. Watch your words. Don't say, oh, I was just kidding. Do you know the universe has no sense of humor? It takes it all in as a command. It takes it all in as a command. Because that's the way the universe was created. It doesn't see it as positive. It doesn't see it as negative. It sees it as a command. Then it flashed upon me that I might talk to the life in every part of my body 
and I have to do just what I wanted. I began to teach my body and my miraculous and got miraculous results. I told the life in my liver that it was not torpid or inert, but full of vigor and energy. I told the life in my stomach that it was not weak or insufficient, but energetic and strong and intelligent. I told the life in my abdomen that it was no longer infested with arrogant ideas of disease, ignorant ideas of disease put there by myself and by doctors. Isn't that true? Oh my God, we swear to God that the doctors are gods. They give us information, but we need to take it and digest it and think about it, you know, and if it's right for our body, you know your body, you know your body. I lost my place. Hang on. Oh, okay. Put there by myself and by doctors, but that it was all alive with sweet, pure, wholesome energy of God. So what if you started doing that? My body is sweet, whole, pure, and innocent. I told my limbs that they were active and strong. I told my eyes that they did not see of themselves, but that they expressed the sight of spirit and that they were drawing on unlimited source. I told them that they were young eyes, clear, bright eyes, because the light of God shone through them. I told my heart that the pure love of Jesus Christ followed in, flowed in, and through its beatings and and through its beatings that all the world felt its joyous pulsation. What a beautiful thought. Joyful pulsation of joy, love, laughter, peace. I went to all the centers in my body and spoke the words of truth to them, of strength and power. I asked their forgiveness for the foolish, arrogant course that I pursued in the past when I had condemned them and called them weak, insufficient, and diseased, I did not become discouraged at their being slow to wake up, but kept right on, both silently and aloud, declaring the words of truth until the organs responded. So just don't think you could do it once and it's over and it's done with. Remember, you pounded those uh, negative thoughts into your body and into your life for decades. But it won't take decades to get out. It only took Myrtle Fillmore three years of consistency every single day for her to heal herself of TB. It's powerful stuff. I did not become discouraged at their being slow to wake up, but kept right on, both silently and aloud, declaring words of truth until the organs responded. And neither did I forget to tell them that they were free, unlimited spirit. I told them that they were no longer in bondage to the cardinal mind and that they were not corruptible flesh, but centers of life and energy omnipresent. Then I asked the father to forgive me for taking his life into my body and using it so wastefully. I promised that I would never return the free flow of that life through my mind and my body and my false words or thought, that I would always bless it and encourage it with true thoughts and words in, in its wise work of building up my body temple, that I would use all diligence and wisdom in telling it just what I wanted it to do. I also saw that I was using the life of the father in thinking thoughts and speaking words and became very watchful as what I thought and what I said. I did not let any worries or anxious thoughts into my mind. I stopped speaking gossip, frivolous um, words, angry words. I let a little prayer go up every hour that Jesus Christ, yes, Jesus Christ would be with me and help me think and speak only kind, loving, true words and I am sure that he is with me 
because I am so peaceful and happy now. I want everybody to know about this beautiful true law and to use it. It is not a new discovery, but when you use it and get the fruits of the health and the harmony, it will seem new to you and you will feel that it is your own discovery. That is how Myrtle Fillmore healed herself. Um, it's called How I Found Truth. It's in a little pamphlet. It's probably in one of the books, but I don't know where. But, you know, there is a, a site. It's called truthunity.org. It's got all of the Unity books and Charles and Myrtle Fillmore's writings and all their writings that you can go online and you can read or you can donate um, if you want to the uh, website, but it's got all the real unity stuff to it. So today, you know, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. You know, what are the fruits? You know, a, bear, a, a tree bears its own fruit. You are a tree of life. You are a vessel of God. What kind of fruits are you bearing in your life? I got to ask myself the same thing. Don't be afraid to call in the presence of Jesus Christ. Before I do any sermon, I ask Jesus to put his hands on my shoulders and to speak to me. Because it's never about me. It's always about the Holy Spirit and what Holy Spirit can do. But I will claim I work daily to be the best vessel I possibly can for the spirit of God to work through me because miracles happen when God is doing the work and we're not claiming it. We can say I was a good vessel, you know, that's okay. Because that makes us feel good and humble. It makes me feel humbled that I can be of service to my God in that way. Know yourself in God. You will know God when you know yourself. You hear me? You will know God when you look at yourself. Get rid of what's not working. Get rid of what's not of God inside of you. Ask for help from the Holy Spirit. Ask for help from Jesus Christ to put his hand upon your heart. In fact, you know, let's do that right now as we move into the meditation. Put your hand on your heart and, and let's just breathe together. Breathe in the presence of God, the power of God, and exhale out everything that is not of God. God, I humbly let go of everything that is not of you. Create in me a pure heart, dear Lord. Let me not hang on to all this shadow stuff that dims my light. For I want my light to be so bright. I want to help heal the world. Even though I'm one being, but I am one massive spirit with you. I breathe in the light and I exhale out the darkness. The Christ in me is my hope of glory. Repeat that to yourself. The Christ in me is my hope of glory. Now say to yourself, I am the Christ. I am the Christ. Feel that power. Feel that presence. I am the Christ expressing. May the Christ in me emanate from me, illuminate from me. 
for no matter where I go, that my presence is a blessing, that the work is being done by you, Holy Spirit, by the Christ in me, is blessing, is healing people as I walk by them. As I drive by them, or I stand with them, I am the presence of the living Christ. Jesus, I need your help to shed this mortal mind and help me to be in the world, but not of it. I want to be in faith and walk in love. I thank you, God, for this opportunity to be your mighty vessel today, all of us. We thank you, dear God, for providing for us in unbelievable ways. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for answered prayer. For we are healthy, whole, and complete in you. We are wealthy in you, dear God. We are open, receptive, responsive, and obedient to your divine guidance and inspiration this day and every day. And so it is. Amen. I know we're running late, but I want to tell you one more story. I had to do a memorial service for an 18-year-old kid this week. And I guess I need to talk about it so I can continue to process it. Uh, him and his friend went head-on into a tree and the car got engulfed in flames and neither one of them made it out. The young man's name was Gabriel. So I went to Google and I said, what's the meaning of Gabriel? And here's a little more of the Bible for you. Gabriel is the messenger. Gabriel was the one who told Mary she was with child. Archangel Gabriel. Archangel Gabriel was also the messenger to Joseph to tell him to leave Egypt because their lives were in danger. Gabriel was the archangel that went the night that Jesus was born and placed lilies at the manger. Do you know what Gabriel's sister's name was? Lily. Lily. That's how God works. That's an example of how God can work in and through you as you for the glory of God. And it's only. And if you get a chance, I know Charles would have just loved this book. It's called The Battlefield of the Mind. And you know what I like about it? Joyce Myers did the same thing Charles and Myrtle Fillmore did years ago. They, you, there's... Um, each chapter has a, a work page to it. And it's an easy read. It's not an intellectual read. And I thank you again for the opportunity and the privilege to be a vessel for all of you today. And thank you so much for letting me be here. I am honored. Thank you.
now. <laughs> okay, I think we'll all take a deep breath. Take that all in. And as we prepare our tithes and offerings for this community and for our outreach, I invite you to excuse me, join in the offering prayer. There is no lack nor limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. And I think Patty and Brian and several others said, only be a cheerful giver. So as you do that, if not, hold it back. And we know that seeing Ida is gonna make you cheerful too. She comes around and collects it because <laughs> she's always smiling. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have Julie and Linda again for us for some music. Also for anyone, while they're preparing that, anyone who needs to give online, you're welcome to do that through our website at unitycenterinmilwaukee.com um, or call the office and they'll give you the information as well. You can do that through PayPal or send in a check as well. Thank you. If you ask me who I am, I am wisdom, I am light, I am more than meets the eye, I cannot be denied. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts, that changes things that shape my life. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts, I have the power to change my life. If you ask me what I am, I am beauty, I am joy, I am more than meets the eye, cannot be denied. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts, it changes things that shape my life. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts, I have the power to change my life. I can choose to be the light, brighten someone's darkest night. I'm so much more than meets the eye, I cannot be denied. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts, that changes things that shape my life. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts, I have the power to change my life. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts that changes things that shape my life. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life. Okay, I invite everyone to extend their hands and hearts over this offering. Thank you, God, for having the ability to be able to extend our finances to this community and to the community around us. We thank you that this is just a piece of us that we are giving back to spread the word of unity, healing, prayer, and being, being able to stay in the community where we are. We thank you for all those who have been able to give today. 
and all those who want to give. And so it is. Amen. Bless all the givers. Bless all the givers. That's right. All right. Announcements time. Okay. So next week we have Eva Overholt who will be speaking on That's My Story and I'm sticking to it. That should be fun. And of course we have Silent Unity Prayer every Thursday at 11 a.m. as we said. We also will have Ch uh, Sue and I over in the side here praying for those who wish prayer as well. Um, the silent prayer service on Thursday is either here or virtual and get a hold of Kevin if you need that link or leave a message at the office. Also on Thursday, there will be looking at a new book in October. So anyone that's interested in starting that, they're finishing up one right now that's a, a special uh, piece, which is why they're not promoting it. Uh, it's a closed group, but they will be starting in October with a new book to be decided. Um, we have A Course in Miracles every Sunday, starting about 11.45. Are you playing games with us today, or are you going to? Okay, there is no class today, but normally we'll be doing that at 11.45 for those interested in it. So no class today. But Joanne normally teaches that. Of course, we have our wonderful website. You can get all kinds of information on there. You can get past services. You can listen to Reverend Patty again. You can listen to Reverend Russ. You can listen to any of our past messages and be able to kind of focus on what they're saying a little more in, the, in your own home. Um, sometimes we need to hear that a little, a little bit on our own uh, to take it all in because there's a lot that we get. Uh, there's also our upcoming classes. There are uh, little bulletin blurbs, uh, messages. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff. Just go check it out. Click on it. Even if you don't read it, click on it and improve our SEO, our search engine, so that, you know, when somebody's looking for a positive message every week, they come and find us. <laughs> uh, the Life Journey Groups meet the second and fourth Monday of the month from 6.30 to 8.15 in the evening. Bring yourself, bring a warm heart, and just share with your fellow folks. Today is games. You want to say something, Sandy? Right, so Sandy says she brought a bunch of interesting, fun, lively games for everybody. And you know, we don't do this very often, that we just get to have fun and not think on anything hardcore. Well, although some of the games occasionally really make us think, um, but that's okay too. But we can just all have fun as a community. Um, I know Sandy's looking, if anybody's interested in maybe facilitating one of those game days, um you know maybe once a quarter or something that would be great now you know, once a month would be great but like once a quarter or something to to do that and just like all of our events here you know someone needs to step up to volunteer so there's always volunteers needed for the kitchen for greeting uh for the av board um you know doing this all kinds of stuff. So please get a hold of Diane. She is not here this weekend, but her email is there for you. Uh, get a hold of her. If there's anything you think you want to do, ask her. I bet she'll find a place for you. You know, even if it's filling, here's another one, filling these pews here with the envelopes and paper on an afternoon. Not a lot, but it takes a village to keep us going. We appreciate that. And Reverend Ron Palumbo will be here in October with us. Um, he is a law of attraction minister. He travels around. Um, he lives and breathes it. And he'll be here on the 2nd of October. 
uh, speaking in our service, as well as doing a workshop afterwards from one to five. The cost of that workshop is $60 now, and I'm not quite reading it, 75 later. Um, it's gonna be 75 total. Now it's not 60 anymore. By nine, well, okay, the end of September. Thank you. That's what I couldn't read. Was I know the dates there somewhere? Some small community. So if you don't register by next week, so it's next week. So you got this week and next week that you can save fifteen bucks, twenty-five percent, no, twenty percent of it, whatever it is, you know. And then you can, if you really want to spend that money, hide it instead. Um, save some money. Okay, there will be someone taking the money and registering you for this week. Um, there's a couple ways that you can pay for it. Uh, they'll talk to you about what the arrangements can be made, or like I said, or be prepared to do that next week. Uh, all right, that's that one. Um, <laughs> there's more. That's the same thing. Thank you. <laughs> I jumped the gun a little bit, but it's called empowerment. So for us. Uh, all right. Are there any announcements that we don't know about? All right. So I'm going to invite folks to stand as you are able. You know my one. Face the outside. Let's leave the open round that screen over there so that we are expressing who and what we are to the community as well. I think we're still not joining hands, so we'll leave that that way. Yeah. All right, come join the circle or stay as you will. Thank you all for joining us on the air and here. Come join us for a fellowship. And thank you, Reverend Patty and Julie and Linda and everybody else that participated today. <laughs>